All right, so we have the crank locking tool kind of set in place. A uh, little bit of a challenge when compared to undoing it because we now have to um, support this on the other side. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So down here, you can see we've got the crank locking tool attached. I use the same method because again, mine is not deep enough. Hopefully you get one that is. Um, but this hard line right here is exactly where the handle of that crank locking tool needs to be. So I wasn't able to support it on the frame rail. However, I believe that I can support it on the uh, sway bar down there. That is like the metal mount for the sway bar. So um, I've basically got it resting on that. The nice thing is because the crank pulley freely rotates right now, because it's not secured to the crank, um, it did make it a little more straightforward to get those bolts in and uh, get everything lined up. So basically all we gotta do is get our thread locker on this uh, this giant bolt right here and torque this bad boy to 275 foot-pounds. All right, so I was slightly off. 275 is a little excessive. It looks like it's about 258 foot-pounds, uh, so 350 Newton meters. Uh, that is the spec that I'm finding online. So I'm gonna get this thread locker on here and we're gonna crank it down and we are gonna get this torque wrench to click. All right, so we just have a short extension on here and uh, we're now attaching the torque wrench to this and we're gonna start cranking this bad boy down. So uh, there's gonna come a point possibly where James may need my hands on that wrench as well. Um, so yeah, we're gonna keep going until it clicks. And moments ago, we had the satisfying click. So we are officially at 258 foot pounds of torque. So we are now removing the crank locking tool, uh, bracing it against the um, sway bar worked really nicely. So if you need to do the same, that is a good method. So once we remove this tool, um, we're gonna basically just make sure that it all looks good, but uh, we're gonna move on to putting the remaining front accessories on. So we've got our idlers and we've got our tensioners that have to go on. And farewell crank locking tool. I hope I never have to see you again. So we have our serpentine tensioner in place and uh, we're now gonna put our supercharger belt tensioner in place. Um, they are keyed, so these little uh, raised circles that you see locate into the, uh, the holes that you see, let's see right here, right? So you see those two holes and then there's the bolt hole in the middle. So that's how you locate it and make sure that the geometry is correct on this. And uh, for reference, the supercharger belt one is shaped like this and the serpentine belt one, you can see the arm is actually behind it and it comes forward. All right, so both of these tensioner pulleys are now on. Uh, they are 13 mil bolts and they go to 32 foot pounds. All right, so now that those two tensioner pulleys are on, the next step up is going to be uh, redoing this water pump gasket. Like I mentioned in the last video, you cannot buy this internal one and mine looks pretty rough and I really don't want a water leak. So. I'm going to basically be hitting this with a Scotch-Brite just to knock off this coating uh, and basically just get it as nice and flat as I can. And then basically I'm gonna be doing, you know, kind of a layer of RTV on both sides with this gasket in the middle and it should work just fine. So uh, we're gonna prep that up and get it going. So we are officially ready to get this water pump back together. Um, with a procedure like this, anytime you're working with a sealant, it's always good to have everything pre-prepped first before you start gooping stuff on. So. Um, we've cleaned the inside of the back side of the housing there, um, made sure that our mating surface is nice and clean. There were a couple little high spots which we knocked down with a razor blade, just real careful not to mar the surface, then wiped it down with some parts cleaner to make sure that was oil free and ready to go. The um, gasket, as we mentioned, has now been cleaned of all of that black um, original sealing material. Uh, found a really good method for that that was really easy. Uh, basically, just give it a quick bath in parts cleaner and a uh, wire brush with the steel bristles uh, really just knocked it off nicely. It worked almost like paint stripper. Uh, it came right off and made a real good job, a quick job of it and real clean. So that's thoroughly cleaned and then given a last wipe down with brake cleaner. And then same on this face as we did on that one. A little bit of razor blade, a little bit of cleaning, ready to go. So those components are now ready to receive the RTV. Um, we've also got the bolts prepped and cleaned and the torque specs are looked up. Uh, these two were reading as 25 Newton meters. Um, and these, I read a spec that said eight Newton meters plus 90 degrees. I may even go fractionally less because we are working with a proper sealant. So I may not have to go quite as hard as that. Um, I've got my uh, inch pound wrench ready to go with my eight mil socket for these and a 10 mil socket for those. Um, so basically 
My next step, I'm gonna create just a real thin film of RTV on that surface there. I'm then gonna take this gasket and place it in, in situ and then probably use these two bolts just to, to stop it from like falling off. Uh, but the RTV should adhere it in place. Then, same deal, RTV on that face there and basically take those two bolts back out, put the water pump on and put those two bolts back in and kind of use that to just gently pin it. And then I can work on torquing these. And um, the sequence that I understand is basically bottom center, top left, top right, and then kind of, I believe it's this guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. So um, I'm gonna work in that sequence. I think that should be good enough uh, since we are working with a metal um, sandwiched gasket between sealant, I think we're pretty forgiving here. All right, so that concept looks cool in theory, but I changed it up in practice once I started to do it. I ended up actually taking the gasket over to the workbench, putting it on a shop cloth, and doing the thin film of it on the correct side first, then bringing it to the car. It was a lot easier to get a uniform coating uh, at the workbench than working kind of down in the engine bay. And you can see the lovely stencil left over after I did it. So I just did a bead around the whole thing and then used my finger to smooth it nice and thin over the whole gasket. And then like I said, carried it over, put it on and I've pinned it in place with the bolts just so it doesn't fall off. So now we're gonna do the same thing with this here on the bench. Uh, we're gonna get the uh, material in there and then take it over to the car. And we have it in the car. So um, like a lot of RTV situations, I've actually done this to a light torque spec to start with. Uh, rather than cranking it all the way to its full torque, uh, because we've kind of made our own gasket, um, I just went real light, uh, realistically probably about 20 or 30 inch pounds on each of those. Um, and I did it in a torque sequence to make sure it uniformly seated. And now we're gonna give that a little bit of time for that RTV to set up, and then we're gonna come back and do it to the final torque spec. Uh, and that, that way I'll feel a little more confident that it's bonded nicely, it's been pinned in there, and then you add that little bit of extra compression, which really helps with the seal. So in the meantime, while that's drying, I'm gonna work on cleaning uh, this pulley. This is a pretty prominent front and center, so I'm gonna make it as nice as I can uh, and shine it up as best as it will shine up. And we have it on. So um, these go to 12 Newton meters. Um, I was only able to get them to nine Newton meters uh, by holding the pulley with my hand and using the torque wrench. Uh, so once the serpentine belt goes on, which I'll do uh, shortly once the RTV is just a little bit drier, um, it, you know, then I can go the remaining uh, step up to the 12 uh, Newton meters. But basically, we are really, really close to getting these belts on, which is a huge step. Now, about to go get some chili dogs over at uh, Checkers, uh, take a little bit of a lunch break and that'll give the RTV a chance to set. But this is a great time to remind you guys, if you're watching this video and it's uh, been helpful or you're just excited to see this thing get back on the road, hit that like button. This is a big, big milestone. We're getting real close and the more of you guys that like this video, the more people that'll see this one and hopefully more importantly, that next one, which is gonna be our first start. Um, if you've watched more than one of these, please consider subscribing probably means you like our content and you want to see more and obviously it helps us grow the channel and last of all if you really really want to support us by buying me some chili dogs uh, you can always go over to the patreon over there and support us uh, financially as well uh, even just a small donation over there makes such a huge difference to us and it means the world so we really appreciate all of our patrons now it's time to get some chili dogs i figure i'll even bring you guys with me Predictably, that was really good, but we're gonna get back at it now. Uh, the stupid things you do when you're hungry and not thinking straight. Shouldn't have put that pulley on yet because we didn't torque those bolts all the way down. I was literally going to go do it and realized, uh, duh, I can't reach them. So uh, we're gonna pull this pulley back off, torque those down to spec, and then put the pulley back on to the, uh, whatever it was, 12 Newton meters, that's right. Told you all, we'll show you everything. We're not one of these channels that makes it look like everything goes perfect. 
All right, got them all torqued up now, so the pulley's going back on, and now we can do it all the way to torque spec. So now we've got the pulley back on, we're gonna work on getting the belt on, but uh, if you haven't already done this, basically now would be a great time to clip up your harnesses into their respective little mounting points here in the valve cover. Just make sure they stay up and out of all the moving bits and pieces. Um, and then basically make sure you kind of do up any last connections. So we've got these plugs here. I've already done the ones on this side, um, so I can just route this here as well. And uh, yeah, basically that gets them kind of somewhat finally installed and tied up. So we're only going to do the serpentine belt for now, which is this guy right here, the long one. Uh, we're not going to do the blower belt just yet because we want to put that coolant crossover back on first. However, serpentine belt will be a little easier to reach with that coolant crossover off. Not the end of the world, but I'm doing it in that sequence just because it's more accessible. And just like movie magic, we have our belt on. So uh, basically, I routed it around all of the pulleys the way you see here, which is the correct orientation. And the last one, which I did not go around because obviously this is the tensioner, um, I basically had the pulley kind of swung out the front here. I put my 15 mil socket on here. Uh, obviously, I attached a breaker bar to that to lean on it and pull the tensioner inboard. Uh, and yeah, basically by leaning on that, I was able to then thread this over the pulley. So again, you can see the routing here. You go down to your alternator here. It comes up and over this idler pulley here. It comes up past here over your water pump, down around the outside of both of these, back up to your crank pulley. Obviously, make sure you're on the inside one. Boom, round your tensioner, and then back down to your alternator. Now on to my favorite hose in the entire car. You heard me mention it before, but that chunky 90 degree little elbow, giant elbow that goes on the water neck right below the blower. I gotta put that back on and the smaller hose as well, which I'll attach to the coolant crossover. Now I'm gonna do my best to clean this thing up. Um, I seem to remember it had just a little bit of that oxidation on it, so it's gonna kind of be what it is, but we'll see if I can brighten it up some. And uh, also, uh, earlier, there were those two O-rings where I mentioned maybe they go on the inside of the timing cover if you have a VVT car or something. No, they actually go here. I'd completely forgotten. So I'm actually going to pop these out, clean out the channels just with a little parts cleaner, make sure there's no debris in there, and we're going to put those new O-rings in. All right, these are the little guys that go in the channels there. I've just gone around the inside of those with a Scotch-Brite and uh, a wet rag just to get as much as I can out and make sure that bottom mating surface is clean. And as we know, the faces on the cylinder heads are nice and clean because they've been freshly machined. So should make a nice seal. All right, I've mentioned it in an earlier video, but these hose pliers right here are super, super handy for this car. So I bought a three pack, which is all different sizes. Currently I'm using the large ones. And what it's letting me do is reach all the way down in there and grip around the hose and get a good firm grip on it and kind of shake the hose to where it's actually seating onto the little um, like a connector part down there, which is normally incredibly, incredibly difficult. So with this, it's letting me reach in there where I never was able to before. And also while I'm moving it, I'm seating this and that down there as well. So basically I'm just kind of wiggling this whole assembly to try and seat all three of those connections somewhat in one motion. And if you feel like you're having trouble uh, making progress, just make sure that this is moved past this little lip here. Mine was getting caught there at first. And as soon as I realized that, I was able to step it past and suddenly I had all the room in the world. Now there's not a specific magic trick outside of what I showed you. It's just being patient and perseverant. So I'm gonna keep fiddling with this and we're gonna get it seated. Uh, and then we've got the four bolts that hold it in and we're moving on. Okay, and we have the crossover on. Like I said, just lots of wiggling it around and adjusting the hoses and kind of working them down. One thing that did help was actually, uh, once I got it close enough, I put the four bolts, two on this side, and uh, two on this side in and basically just started to use those to give a little inward pressure just just a little bit and basically that would hold some pressure against this to where when I started to squeeze on it and pull it would basically uh, seat it down a little further and then I would tip, uh, tighten the bolts up a little and basically just work back and forth getting it all seated down so a little bit of farting around but it is basically there now so next up I'm going to do the blower belt I think and then there are um, some hoses that we need to kind of reroute as well. So we've got the ones that come from the coolant reservoir and kind of weave under here. One connects here and then one uh, or two, I believe, go up front here. Um, and before we do those, we're also gonna have to install the intercooler, which is a really, really exciting time. Little details like this are the best part, honestly. And even more exciting, the realization has just sunk in that the next part to install 
is the intercooler. And that is what I've been waiting this entire project for. I know I teased it earlier, but literally it's going in now for good. So I pulled these bushings out of the original intercooler and they are supposed to basically go in the same place on the new one. Um, so basically we're just tucking it through right now. I'm just using a flat blade screwdriver and carefully poking this side through so it pops all the way through. And then we'll do the same on this side. And uh, literally that's just the two bolts that hold it in because the top were just the uh, locating pins. All right, so if you remember from earlier, we have the locating pins up top, which go through these grommets here in the top surface. So we're gonna basically lift this up, seat those through there. Once they're in, it'll clear this brace bar at the bottom and that'll let us swing the bottom in over the top of that bar. And look at that. Does that not look spectacular? So um, once the bolts seat all the way down, you'll feel the shank on them hit the, uh, the metal at the back uh, and it'll kind of squeeze the bushing but not crush it all the way flat. So just make sure that you nip them up nice and tight um, and you'll basically make sure that the, the collar touches the metal and you are done. So uh, I'm gonna add this hose onto here, of course. Um, mine already has the drain plug sealed and in place, so we're good there. And uh, I just need to route the other large hose, which comes off of this guy, and then has kind of the octopus hose that goes up to the top, and also one that comes through here to connect here. So that's up next. Uh, I think once I've got that hose through, and also maybe this little guy, which is one of the hard line hoses, uh, I will probably route that as well. Once those are in, then I'll work on putting these hood hinges back in place. Okay, now we have those connections done and looking good, we're moving on to the last two connections from this octopus hose here. So we've got this little kink thing going on here where basically it kicks around under itself and then over itself, right? So these make up this connection here and the inner connection on the driver's side charge air cooler. So this one plugs on there and this one plugs on here. So I'm gonna give these a quick last wipe down and we're gonna set those up. Okay, and with those connected, that completes this octopus hose, nice and easy. Obviously, we uh, still need to connect the one up front here on both sides, we will not forget that, but those are routed and ready to go. So next up on top is this little elbow, which goes right here. And with that installed, we only have two connections left. And if you remember, those come from the auxiliary intercooler pump down here, which is this guy. So you can see it's pretty straightforward. It runs up like so, and they each connect to one side. And there we have it. So there's only one more coolant hose left to go on here. And that is this big guy here, which kicks around to the other side of the radiator there. So we're gonna knock that out now. And there it is. That is the last of the coolant hoses. So she basically has a complete cooling system. Now, one other little detail. Don't forget, we took out these drain plugs earlier. So we're gonna put these back in because otherwise we will have an instant coolant leak. And of course, actually, I should clarify, we really only need one of these now in my case because my intercooler already had a new plug in it in the form of a bolt. So I'm just gonna put this one in and just make sure it still has the O-ring on it as well so that it seals properly. And here we go. Perfect. And that is the beautiful thing about the Powerhouse Performance one of these. The stock hoses all have the same connection, so nice and easy. It just plugs right in, it makes it such an easy install. So. This is the last connection here on the intercooler. And if we remember, we've got the guy that comes from the reservoir here and from here. And these route under this charge air cooler here. One connects over there. There's a branch off from one of these. One connects here and one routes all the way through and makes a little U-turn into that guy right there. So obviously I was actually joking with that. There is one very obvious way that all of these go. And if you are unsure, it's very easy to just route them in kind of a test way like this, just resting on top, just to make sure that they run from point to point like you would expect. So starting with this one here, we have one that kicks out the side, definitely has the kink in it to run underneath the charge air cooler here, comes along, kicks over and will land right there. That is exactly what we need. Second, we've got this little T-stack here. So that would be the first one that connects onto this side. It immediately runs sideways under the charge air cooler, of course, comes along and then kicks over and down here and is basically gonna land right there. The other one, which stacks on top of the T-stack and then dog legs back so that it can follow the same track all the way along. And it stops short right there with a connector 
Then the last one, which is the only one to have the little U-turn on it, routes all the way through there, pops out this side right here, and up and has a straight connector which connects into there. So very logical. Uh, if you're stuck, just do exactly what I did there. And you can see the path for each of them. So now I'm gonna route all of these under the charge air cooler the way they're supposed to go and connect them in their final location. And would you look at that, they are all beautifully routed. So uh, in my instance here, I did have one slight difference uh, because of how much thicker this new intercooler is, obviously this connection sits further forward. So I've actually ended up kind of pulling some of the slack on this line. Um, so there's a way that I routed it that just gave it a little extra uh, ability to come around here and still connect. Yours won't have this issue if you're running the standard intercooler, but it did connect just fine. As with a lot of O-rings, uh, these do go in a little easier if you wet them first. So just wetting the inside of the connection and the O-rings themselves, and then kind of wiggling them in and just making sure they don't pinch or bulge out when you do it, because otherwise you will have a leak and that won't be fun. So with all of those routed, we have an almost complete engine again. We are getting really close. The remaining pieces now are gonna be the actual intake pipe and connecting the mass airflow uh, and doing the airbox as well. We're gonna install the fan assemblies. And then of course, after the fan assemblies are in, um, I believe the only thing left at that point is doing the hood hinges and the horns. So I'm gonna work on those three things. Um, I will probably do the airbox next, I think, because that'll simply start to wrap up the actual underhood components. So I think it'll be airbox, fan assemblies, followed by hood hinges and horns. Ooh boy, looks like there's gonna be some cleaning needed. And we have the air intake mostly in. So in my case, because I'm running the Mina Gallery cold air intake here, essentially um, it's just two Phillips head screws that mount the cold air box down there. And yes, I know a lot of you will be like, ah, it's not a true cold air because it's sort of open, blah, 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 whatever. So warm air intake, I don't care. Um, but we've got uh, the boot back here. And uh, with my car specifically, I need to make sure I seat that as far down as possible on that throttle body there before cranking that um, hose clamp down just to make sure that this sits as low as humanly possible. Because you can see, once I put the fresh engine mounts in, the engine sat a little higher and that led to contact with the underside of the hood. So uh, again, for me, that's important. For you, it may not be, but that's something I have to do now. And now that I have that cranked down, the last component for the intake here, obviously I made sure the MAF was connected, is this little guy right here. So that basically just plugs on like that, nice and easy. And then this little hose here sits on like that. So the one thing that does have me a little curious is, I wish I have a hose clamp on that. I wonder if that's letting a little bit of air behind the MAF. You know, it always smelled like it ran a little rich and I'm wondering now if that's where that's coming from. Let me see if I can find a little hose clamp and put it on there. And the fans are in. So just the two bolts at the top supporting them. They do rest on those little hooks at the bottom. So when you lower it down, you'll feel them stop on that. And you can just rest it back in place, put those two bolts in. And uh, obviously you've got your two plugs. So you got one for the upper fan that goes to the bottom of this motor right here. And one for the lower fan down here. And then of course, a couple zip ties just to locate these wires and make sure they stay out of the pulleys. All right, so you may remember from earlier that we have the three mounting points for the hood hinge here. So basically, I'll show you using this side here. Essentially, the hood hinge slides in like that, and then the bolts go in that way. Now, you'll remember we have two very long bolts. The good news is, because these are oval openings, even with my giant intercooler, I'm able to kind of work them in at an angle, stand them up straight, and they actually will get dead straight right before they thread in. You can get the first couple of turns with your fingers. Then um, it started to stiffen up just a little. So I've been using an open-ended wrench here just to get it to where it's just far enough away to where I can then get a ratcheting wrench in there. And then I was flying along getting this one in. So the front two are the long ones. The rear one is just a regular short one. So I'm gonna get both of these down to where they just quite, like, or don't quite touch, so it's just kind of skimming the surface. Then I'll put this back one in, and we're gonna line this back up with that Sharpie mark that we left, and then we'll start to tighten these down, and we can move on to the horn. And we also now have the horn installed. So um, all I did was clean this up a, a little bit. These connectors were still sitting basically in situ, um, so I just plugged those back onto their spade connectors, 
um, and then slipped this up over these uh, studs here, which are the long bolts that come through, um, and then slid the nuts over and tightened those down. So this is now in and firm and ready to support the hood. So we're gonna move. And there we have it. We've got the uh, grounding strap pinned in behind this nut here, the way it came out from. This horn is connected as well, so this side is now done. Uh, so both the hinges are in, and essentially, we're kind of ready to move on pretty much to doing the fluids at this point. I don't believe there's any more physical hardware that needs to go on for the actual first start, uh, which is a huge, huge milestone. So uh, yeah, basically tomorrow is going to be fresh oil, uh, coolant, supercharger oil, and uh, you know, in essence, uh, we'll do a proper bleed of, of the cooling system, which is a, a certain procedure you have to do. And then of course, double check all the oil, things like that. Uh, and we will see how that first start goes. Now, as I am sure you can imagine, I am super excited. Uh, this has been a huge project, probably one of the biggest I've done on one of my dailies before. And uh, I am very, very excited. I am hoping that on that first start, things just work out uh, because we have done so much and come so far that obviously we really, really want to make sure that, you know, the attention to detail that we paid while putting it together will pay off. So um, we're gonna wrap up for today. Uh, if this video has been good for you, please hit that like button. You ha if you haven't already, please, please, please do hit that like button. Don't forget to do that. That really helps us out. And of course, please consider subscribing. Um, that would really, really help the channel grow. And uh, literally, next video, we're doing those fluids and we're doing that first start. So if you have not subscribed, subscribe now. Hit that notification icon. You'll get to see this thing's first start. And hot on the heels of that first start, after it's break-in, we're going to have some fun with this thing. So um, definitely, definitely follow along to see what cool stuff we do with this.